Well, hey there, everybody. We live in interesting times. I have been living in very interesting times, <laughs> researching have we found an extraterrestrial alien or biological signature for you. And it's taking me down a fascinating rabbit hole where today I can reveal something that I didn't know, why the science community are not telling you the truth. Unbelievably, SETI have a protocol not to confirm that we are alone in the universe. But new information reveals that quantum tunneling communication with ET has already begun. Hey everybody, this story is really fascinating and has taken a very interesting new turn. I have reached out to defend my position that I was told as a science filmmaker, that there is confirmation of an extraterrestrial technological signature and probably an extraterrestrial biological signature. And also the search continues for a technological chemical signature from the spectral analysis of exoplanets. Has ET, like we have, made chemicals that aren't naturally occurring? That would be a good sign. So I've spent days and nights on the phone, on Facebook Messenger, speaking to people about SETI. And what I've learned and will reveal to you right here, right now, is there's something deeply dark and suspicious going on. And the mystery which I will solve for you today is all because of this viewer's question. On the surface, just an innocent question from an inquiring viewer. Or is it? So I reached out to the few people who are still talking to me in the radio telescope community, especially here in Europe. And what they said about that question explains everything. And here's what I learned. What I, and possibly you, don't know is there is a protocol about disclosure, about confirmation. It's a little-known protocol accepted by SETI, by the radio telescope community, and possibly Breakthrough Listen, who might well break the rules but understand this protocol and how it works. And it's very much the protocol accepted by organisations such as the UN, religious groups such as the Vatican and your government. So what is it, Simon, and why don't we know about it? Well, it's written by Dr. Peter Schenkel. He wrote this fascinating advice specifically aimed at the science community of how they could F up, how they need to control disclosure, how they need to confirm everything before releasing it to the general public. And that's what's happening right now in 2024. We, the members of the public, are being drip-fed bits of information to soften us up for a hammer blow that we're not alone in the universe. So I'm going to let the senior radio telescope European administrator tell you what's going on. What they say is truly fascinating and very revealing of why. So I've used an AI voice to change his or maybe her voice to explain what's really going on and to understand how to respond to a viewer who asks, where's the BLC1 update? Only three days after the story broke. That's bollocks. The scientific community don't work like that and shouldn't answer those type of questions. The media works like that. They just want to know, is it true or is it a lie? Confirmation or not? You know, what this guy is about to tell you answers all your questions. It took actually quite some time for Dr. Peter Schenkel to think out the roadmap of how to publicly disclose alien contact. From his work with the United Nations, he knows how the general public reacts, and he knows exactly how to change people's way of thinking in a positive manner. What happens is basically this. If you don't have some kind of roadmap, then people don't understand how important it is to confirm all the results. They just want simple yes or no answers, which is not how science works. So, imagine saying today that we've discovered an extraterrestrial civilization. A week later, people will want to know, is it true and what are they saying? 
This might be the most important question in the world, but people want instant and oversimplistic answers. If we don't produce like performing bears in six months, the next thing that happens is one of these idiots dismisses the discovery as a lie. Pundits on social media say the signal fake and science is not capable of answering their simple questions. Then they might suggest other people need to do this research instead. They say use cloud-based AI, or we need other people who are hobbyists and people who have psychic powers or God knows what, to communicate with aliens and find out what they are really saying, because obviously all our scientists are too stupid to give us real answers. Well, this reaction is obviously well known by Peter Schenkel. So a better approach was to first find out everything and then disclose it publicly in little bits. So when governments and religious leaders come with smart, logical questions, the scientists will obviously have the answers for them. And it all gets disclosed in a very, very orderly fashion. That's what is happening today. We're in the phase of trying to understand what the signals mean and what the aliens are saying to us. The idea is to prepare humanity for this information. And this means small disclosures to get people thinking and accepting and realizing that some big disclosure is coming soon. That's basically where we are today. Everyone has heard of SETI, but fewer folk know about many. Numerous times we've sent messages to different star systems, but this is obviously with light speed communication. This all happened before Professor Nimitz from the Second Physical Institute of the University of Cologne discovered the quantum tunnel effect of faster than light communication. His first disclosure of a quantum tunnel effect was his waveguide experiment. And a lot of people said, oh, it's total rubbish. You've just got the effect of parameter 22 causing this effect. And others said, you're just measuring it wrong. So Nimitz had to redesign his experiment in a free field with a larger distance between transmitter and receiver. What he built was two feed horns through a large room in his laboratory. The tunneling section was basically multiple thick plexiglass sheets. And the more sheets he added, the longer was the tunnel effect would need to be. The signal should have taken a known time to pass through the plexiglass, but instead there was no delay. The signal left the transmitter and arrived at the receiver at the same time. That's when Nimitz got together with the Assetti community. Nimitz's quantum faster than light communication technology went on to being used on radio telescopes, firstly to listen for zero time alien communications and also to transmit zero time communications. This has not been made public and Nimitz's process disappeared from the internet because some people didn't want it to be open to the public. You'll find some references of it on the internet, but they're extremely well hidden. Okay, Simon, that's all I want to say for now. Thank you for listening and making your films on YouTube. What you are doing is important. I hope your viewers now understand more about what is really going on. Wow, that was really mind blowing. Not only does it explain why SETI and other organizations are reluctant to release early data, but according to my source, and you heard what he said, quantum, faster than light, communication for listening and possibly talking already exists. A new truth is out there. Oh, I'm back. Yesterday, I posted a film about an e-bike. Let me explain why. YouTube pay me one US dollar for a thousand views. These films take lots of money to research and bring to you. Most of my films earn 20 bucks. But I still have to pay for Zoom calls for AI voices for music and archive. So the occasional sponsored video is how I support this channel, but you can help. Here on YouTube, please watch some of the adverts. If you press skip, I get zilch. But let me tell you how you can really help. Become a Patreon. From only $3 a month, you get advert-free early access films, higher quality pictures and audio, direct email notification when new films are posted, and you get to chat to me directly and the other patrons for less than the price of a cup of coffee. Here's the link. Please consider supporting me on Patreon 
today. It really helps. Three bucks from 100 people is 300% more than Google and YouTube pay me for the silly adverts that you don't watch. Thank you.